topics on Motor City Woman Radio. Follow Rocky's Reality. Welcome to Rock is Reality. Get ready for unfiltered and unapologetic culture, entertainment, relationships, and a little bit of politics on Motor City Woman Radio. Follow Rock is Reality on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. In the meantime, let's go. Happy Black M- Music Month, everyone. Welcome to Rock is Reality. And welcome, welcome to my esteemed guest. Uh, I'm not even going to waste time because we we time is of effort, essence and we need to get as much information as possible tonight. So welcome, everyone. And welcome to my guest, Daryl Simmons, Grammy Award winning songwriter, producer, music extraordinaire, music consultant now. Right, yeah, um, yeah, a little song. bit, what, what, a little bit, huh? <laughs> a little bit, because I said I know he's gonna keep making music. I hope he does. Mm. Living legend, luminary, <laughs> titan, just um, paragon. Just, I just want to give you your flowers. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll take them. Now, is it okay if I say Daryl, or, or do we have to do Mr. Simmons? Oh no, Daryl. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, because I, yeah. I'm yeah. old school. I was raised right, so I had I'm to. Old say. School. <laughs> I'm old school I had to ask to get your permission. I said, is it okay if I call him Daryl? So welcome, yeah. Daryl. And Thank again, you. I just want to um, give you your flowers for what you've done uh, for the industry and what you've done for our culture, for our community, for our people, because your music has pretty much shaped who we are, how we love, how we live, how we laugh, <laughs> some major moments from our life. Like seriously, when I was looking through your discography, I was just like in awe of the many moments um, that your music has been there. I'm 46 years old and like 90s music was when (laughs) I was going through high school, college. And as we know, those are some like big major years in your life, right? You're getting out of high school, you know, you're, you're learning at your like your granddaddy said, fat meat is greasy and water is wet. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to thank you um, and just start off with just, do you at times just sit back and awe and wonder like, oh my gosh, what look at what I've done. How your music to this day still resonates with people in 2023. Nah, I don't do that. (laughs) Nah, uh -uh. I appreciate it. I appreciate the love and you know, the acknowledgement of the work that we did. And uh, I always say we, because, you know, Kenny is, we've been songwriting partners for 50 years. So, um, you know, I always say we, not me. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm grateful, grateful. And I appreciate the love that our music still gets today. You know, I am amazed at that sometimes, some of the things that I, people will send me something of people singing, can we talk or, you know, something I've been, wow, these kids, weren't even born when the song came out. <laughs> it, it, you know? And that is exactly what I mm-hmm. love that my children, my children are 19 and 12 mm-hmm. and they listen to SWV. They listen to Tevin. Actually, I just did Tevin at karaoke. Um, around oh, wow. Cool. 2022. Uh, oh, cool. It's still, and, and as you obviously saw the, can we talk challenge during the, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was amazing. It's, That's it's still, I'm, I'm blown away at that kind of stuff like that. So, yeah. So you that's know. and that's what I love that and that's the beauty of music how it just it yes, just stays, I agree. Yeah, um, it stays. And it just follows us so absolutely I really appreciate that um, but well, thank I just, you I appreciate it thank you absolutely you're welcome so let me go back a little bit okay. when I discovered who you were I was like okay he's like the behind the scenes Swingali here <laughs> please go back let's take it way back please go back to the moment. Okay. When um, you've met, uh, you call him Kenny. Is he still there? I see. Yeah, something happened here. Yeah. He's here, but the video's not. Uh oh. Yeah, the video's not. I don't know what happened. Okay, let's try to. I can I can hear you, but I don't know what I need to do because I'm not tech savvy. So you guys may have to help me here. Okay, hold on. Let's let's get it fixed. Okay, he, okay. Your did um, it's on your cell phone. Um, yes, I'm on my phone. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Did you do you see the button where it has like the camera or like the um camcorder part? Can you hit that and put maybe hit it and uh see if it's on? Is uh, there a part of your screen? See. Yeah, it's, it's not a part of my screen. 
I may have to re-sign in with you. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Let yeah. possibly apologize to everybody. Let's no, see. that's why, and we know in this part of this business too, we have tech issues. So let's. Yeah, let so I'm going to hit the going. link again. Everybody, stand by. Yeah. As, um, everybody, stand by. Look, that's the part of it, right? It's always something. So I appreciate everyone for joining. Rock is reality. Um, because we gonna yep. Yeah. Oh, there it is. See, and that's Am what. I you back? Am I back? Yep. There you go. There you go. Okay. Sorry, I think it's my phone today. My phone was jittering it there it goes again oh yeah it's been doing that today i don't know what that is that's crazy um does it need a um there it is yeah no i see myself but then it i know it's doing something crazy so i apologize okay. well yeah. well you know we're just gonna work through it daryl and we you know the devil <laughs> is trying to see the de see the devil know when you're doing something magnificent that's what it is <laughs> but he's not gonna stop the show so we're gonna get to it though Okay, uh, cool. My first question is, I wanted to go back to the first moment um, because obviously you're calling him Kenny. We we still say baby face because we yeah, I can't call him that. He, he's your right. He's your brother. He, he's pretty yeah. much y'all been knowing each other since high school. Can you yep, go back absolutely. to that, that moment you met him and describe it? And kind of uh, just I was a short version. I was actually in a band with his brother. He had a brother named Michael. Um, can you guys hear me? Yep. And can okay. see you. He, I yep. was in a band with his older brother, Michael, who played guitar and our band only played instrumentals. And I had heard that Kenny could sing. I heard about him, but I never met him. And I would say to Michael, I said, why don't we get your brother to sing? He goes, no, we don't need him. We don't need a singer. You know, he was kind of like hating on it. <laughs> sibling so, rivalry. That's a yeah, sibling rivalry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So one day after we practiced, I was tearing down my drums and up walks this guy, these two guys. And he goes, Hey, how you doing? I said, Hey, how you doing? He goes, I'm Kenny. I go, Oh, I've heard about you. I'm in a band with your brother. And, uh, he goes, yeah. So he was vibed out. He already kind of looked like a star. He was carrying his guitar. And I said, wow. He said, you should come join our band because you're kind of more like us. And I go, yeah, I kind of am. Mm. So I, I quit that band with his brother uh -oh. and, and joined his brother him. Too? Probably so, but I didn't care. Oh, and see, his brother and the guys I played with were older. Okay. You know, so I felt, I mean, we instantly clicked. That's what it was. And he said, you should come play drums for us. Mm -hmm. And so uh, from that day, he was 14, I was 15. And uh, from that day, we just linked and connected and started writing songs and dreaming and you name it. And yeah, but I was, I was pretty in awe of him. It was, it's a moment of, like I say, I thought I had a little bit of talent. I thought I had a little, but when I met him, I was like, that guy's talented. He's really talented. <laughs> I, I identified that he was very talented at a young age. I, I could see that, you know. And I love it. And you are, but, uh, but you obviously compliment each other. You all, you obviously compliment each other. Cause like you said, you meshed and you pretty yeah, much, meshed. you all have created. And so let me run down for people right quick to put people mm -hmm. in the frame of mind of how the magnificence that we have y'all I, I don't think y'all a lot of people my viewers they i, I need y'all to understand and a lot of people did actually because when they found out you were on the show they're like you go have daryl simmons i'm like yes mm -hmm. <laughs> i love it so um i mean like i uh, people don't I, I don't think they understand the magnitude of what you've contributed some of and, and yeah, what a lot of people don't but that's that's okay because that's been my role like, okay. I'll ask you a question. Name me three Elton John songs that Elton has written. I'll name them for you. Yellow Brick Road, Candle in the Wind, uh, Philadelphia Freedom, okay? Those are songs that Elton wrote, right? Do you know who co-wrote those songs with Elton? I, I believe you, because you he's one of the people you no. work with. No, no. not you. His, his lifelong songwriting partner is a guy named Bernie Talker that wow. people don't know. Wow. So if you look at Elton John's songs, you'll see Elton John and Bernie talking. Bernie wrote the lyrics and brought them to Elton and said, these need music. But most people know that it's Elton John. So I say that I'm like the black Bernie talking. People know that Babyface hey. wrote, Can We Talk? Babyface wrote End of the Road. <laughs> Babyface wrote Rock With You. Babyface wrote My, My, My. But there's another name there, and that's my name. I co-wrote those songs with Kenny. 
so I, I, I call myself like uh, the do, black Bernie Taupin. And I'm okay with that because that's my role. You know right, you're I mean? a silent partner. So is that why I'm you're a silent partner? Silent Absolutely. partner productions. And and Absolutely. I bet you probably sometimes like being anonymous too. So you don't have to I chose to be that way. The foolishness. I chose to be that way. We were at an event in LA when we lived there, and, the, and this guy met me and he goes, Who are you? I said, I'm Daryl Simmons. He goes, Oh, you're D Simmons. You're the silent partner. He said, we see your name, but we never see you. We see Ellie and Babyface. I said, yep, I'm the silent partner. And that's how I got my name. And I kept it. I said, okay, that's a pretty good name. I'll take yeah. that name. Yeah. So that. that's been my role. And, I, and I've been good with it. I've been comfortable with it. And, you know, I never wanted to be an artist. Uh, I live my artistry vicariously through Kenny. So, uh, so it's, it's, I got the best of both worlds. <laughs> I love that you can be behind the scenes, but also there you go. contribute to it. So how did you all, because I also, with me being 46, I remember the deal. So this yeah. is why I'm so excited, because the evolution, the evolution of you all working together. So talk about what parts do you all bring to each other? Because we all know that's how, when we have a team member, we're like, he does this part, he does this role and I play this role. So usually, is it like you can do the bridge, he brings the, the how it do could you be, know? it could be together to make a song. Like how when Kenny and I write, Kenny always has an idea. Kenny always has that. He'll go, I got some ideas. Okay. And I'll go, okay, and I'll sit back in the chair just like this. And he'll run down the ideas. And I'll go, eh, I'll go, I like that. I'll play another one, eh, I'll go, that's a record. We should work on that. He goes, okay. And then we'll start in with one of his ideas. He always has a melody because he's the king of melody. He goes, this is what I'm thinking. And I go, okay. And so I kind of lock in to where he's going. So I'm a co-pilot. I'm just going to sit back feel him out, see where he's going, and then help connect the dots. And then once the dots- you know, when you when you clash though, how how's it has it been talk, talk tell me a little backstory of a song where you all really had to go through some changes to like, oh, I wanted it to be this way, but and we don't work that way. Okay. We don't work that way. We have we have harmony. We've okay. never uh, worked that so way. So you always we, have a read like we, this is we, how you know. we we read each other. Kenny says that I can just be sitting in the room and not say anything and he'll think of something. And he knows if he thinks of something, I'm gonna come back with something. And so that's the chemistry that we have. We don't butt heads like, well, I don't like that. There it goes. He right. goes, what'd you say? And I go, oh, I said this. He goes, I thought you said that. I go, no, I didn't say that, but I love that. Okay. You know, so who actually uh, writes, writes the actual words? Is we it, both do. You, you we both are right there. Like, okay. my, my contribution with Kenny is always lyrical. Every now and then I'll have a melody, but it's usually lyrical. I read the, I, I feel the melody where he's going, and then he may have a couple of lyrics. I may add a couple of lyrics. He may say, what'd you say? And I said, I said, this goes, oh, I like that. Or he'll say, I like it, but let's make it more clever. Let's make it clearer. And I go, okay. So we work in harmony. We don't argue, we don't butt heads. We're, we're both trying to achieve the same thing. We're on the same path. And he's the pilot and I'm the co-pilot. He's, Bat he's Batman and I'm Robin. Oh, I love that. You know, that. which I say, everybody knows Kenny's fine by himself. He's done wonderful things by himself. You know, and I've done some things by myself, but together, that's how we work. Kenny, always has an idea, always has a wonderful melody. And soon as I hear it, I can go, yeah, that's a record. I don't know what the lyric is gonna be, but when I hear the melody, he'll say, yeah, got something that's, you know. I love it, And that's where we'll go it's with it. Everlasting. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I'm glad you did that, uh, Daryl, because uh, I, I think your phone doing that thing again. Yeah, I'm going to try to get you back. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you... Well, Sorry about that. I get it. It's, it's, but you can it's, still can. hear me, right? Yeah, I can. And I'm glad, I was saying, I'm glad you did that. Um, uh, can we talk right quick? Because uh, my engineer and I were... We I wanted to play a few things on air, and he reminded me, like, oh, with, with copyright, you're not going to be able to. So I'm glad you. Oh, really? Did that. Oh, so really. Um, I just I appreciate how you all complement each other. 
I appreciate that. Oh, he'll we'll probably have to have him rejoin. Yeah, so thank you to everyone who's watching. Oh, uh, hey, Monique. McAlpine. Hey, Ben Franklin. Peace and blessings to you. Hey, Karen Reynolds. Yep. Obviously, they have a mutual love. Hey, Daryl, thank you. You back. Oh. True respect and yeah, so that's kind of how yeah. it works. He's always got a melody. And then it's like he'll say, What is it saying? What is it saying? Right. What is it trying okay. to say? And we'll just both sit there and and feel, okay, what is it saying to us? And then Kenny may say, you know, I talk for a minute. Uh, da, 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 your name. Da, da, da. And it's like, okay, okay, can we talk? Okay, well, what is he, what is he saying? Why why is he saying can we talk? Well, and then you okay. have to be age appropriate too, because he's yes, so age young. appropriate. We he already was, knew that. And this we is already how you asked though, Daryl, how do you all write for a woman? Because Superwoman, how you know what a woman going through? Did you have a mother influence? Because how would you know when she says she in the morning when I'm making breakfast? <laughs> Make sure well, your turkey and your right. sausage and yeah. I mean, how did you know? It's just a you kind of put yourself. You try to put yourself in their shoes. You you can't totally, but you try to flip it and put yourself like, okay, how would a woman feel? How would a woman say this? And that's kind of how because I really I mean for a while there we were. A lot of our biggest records were female records. But did you have you know? that's what I said, did you have women in your life who influenced you, like a mom, an aunt, a cousin, a lady up the street, a teacher? You know, not you, not. I can't say that I did for songs. I think maybe we had some friends. Maybe we were around some relationships on the peripheral, and we saw maybe some women being damaged or not being treated right, uh, and we okay. just used that as an influence. You know, okay, because I remember you um, were saying the lady for my 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 that was like a you all lived in this apartment. Yeah, and it was uh -huh. like a chick who you would see chick come and go, never knew her name, never met her, and from the from the back she was a ten, from the front she, she, was she like wore a red four. dress. Did she wear a red dress? No, but or she had she... big red lipstick and her hair was down. Okay, and, and that's that's her. how the influence. And you know we would see her from the back because she was a ten, and we would go mm, 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 my my my. But from the front, she was like a three. Uh, oh, and so that was our oh, little that was oh, our little shit. inside joke. But oh, when we would see her, we would stop and go, there she is, man. Mm, 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 my, my, my. Oh, Lord. And, With the front know, back. And oh, so man. that's, you know, we just used the, her hair down and she had red lips to put on your lipstick, let all your hair down. And the rest, we just kind of embellished the story and, you know. But she was the influence. <laughs> And you know, to this day, that girl doesn't know that she was influenced to this record right, and we did. never met her, you know. That's timeless. I, and that's yeah. what I was wondering, like, what are some muses? And then I loved um, one of my favorite, one of my favorites as well, SWV. Um, when she explained, Coco explained that her favorite song is You Are My Love and how you pushed mm -hmm. her to keep <clears throat> yeah. going to the studio. As a producer, how do you know? that the artist can keep going. And how do you know when it's like, okay, they've had enough? Uh, you just know, every singer is different. Um, I, I, I pushed her because I knew she could be pushed. I let her sing the whole song down because I knew she could sing the whole song down. And some artists, they can't do that. So you have to identify that and say, okay, let's take a verse at a time. Let's take a line at a time. Okay, now we're done with verse one, let's go to verse two. Okay, let's go to the hook. That you just have to know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody works differently, you know. And Coco is one of those singers who can sing from the beginning to the end and give it to you. Mm. A lot of a lot of artists, and they're good artists that sing really well. Mm -hmm. That don't that don't do that. Then that's okay. It's just a different. It's like having a different player on the bench that gives you different things, and mm. you identify what that person gives you. And so when you go in, I already know how she sings. So I said, hey, sing it for me. Okay, sing it again. She's like, really? I said, yeah, sing it again. Because I know in those takes, one of those takes is going to be the take. And I, know she can, and I know she can keep singing it. But somebody else, I wouldn't push like that because I know that they're not capable of doing that and it's not fair to them. So that's what you have to identify as a producer. Every artist is different. You can't have the same approach with every artist when you go in. 
I love you it. Know. And that's what, yeah, that's what Karen Reynolds was asking. How do you coach the artists to sing these songs? How do they prep the artists? Like someone like Monica, she's another. Um, uh -huh. You um, sing the demo. Kenny will sing the demo. Sometimes I'll sing the demo and we let them live with it overnight and say, okay, come back tomorrow. I don't want you looking at the lyrics and let's get it done. And so that's, that's usually our way is Kenny will sing a demo or I'll sing it who it doesn't matter just so that they understand the melody. We want them to know it, and, but then we want them to put themselves in it. But they can't look at the lyrics, you said. You said we have them there for reference, but I'd love okay. for people to be able to close their eyes and, and feel sing it. it instead of looking at a lyric sheet and getting, right. you know what I mean? Let it flow, so let it flow. Let it flow let naturally. It flow you perfect. may sing a wrong lyric, but that's okay. But we want them to give us something of them. Take it from where we wrote it to here. Give us something that we didn't think of. That's what we're looking for, you know, in, in an artist when they sing. So, um, yeah, Coco, she, that's actually one of my favorite songs. And it's not a hit. It was just an album cut. Yeah, so. okay. Let's talk about B-sides. <clears throat> Let's talk about B-sides um, that, you know, and, and, and also, how do you know, let, let's, let me ask this. What's something that you were surprised it was a hit? You thought, you didn't think it was going to be a hit. And it was like a surprise. You were just kind of piddling around and put it out there and then it became a hit and you're like, damn, I didn't even think that. You know, I, that's, that's, it, that's, 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 that, that's hard because most of the things that we worked on, we could identify if they weren't going to work and Kenny would scrap mm -hmm. it and say, let's okay. write something new. Now there've been songs that were bigger than I thought they were going to be. That's happened. Like okay. Tony's first album. I think I said she'd sell 1.2. Mm. And I think, and I think Kenny or LA may have said, no, she's going to sell 2 million. And I go, ah, I don't think so. She sold like, I don't know, nine million. Right. Of that. So that was surprising to me. So did you, you know do what I mean? wh which ones did you do on there? Was it another sad love song? Uh -huh. okay. You made the world to me, which is my favorite song oh, yeah, that was of my all time. That's my number one favorite song. You mean the world to me. Yes. That's uh, what, what else did we do? We did we did Breathe Again, Seven Whole Days. What else? Seven whole uh, days. I was in a lot of songs grade. on there. <laughs> Ooh, you feel old, seven whole days and was singing yeah, it like I knew 15 years old yeah so there, there have been surprises that you know like end of the road like we knew it was a hit like I knew it was a hit like Kenny knew it was a hit and he wanted to keep it he didn't want to give it to boys to men and so we were like well we need it for the soundtrack he goes yeah but let me try it because I may want to keep it and we were like what the hell and so we went in the studio and I think he sang a verse and a hook. He said, okay, they can have it. And so <clears throat> they recorded it and we all went to Philadelphia. And I just remember just when Wanye was singing, I mean, I was getting chill bumps. This dude was, he was ripping it. Right, because he, he was at oh. the end, he, you could, he was like, nah. I mean, he sounded like. He oh, was and because when we got there lights. and the I story was when we got there, they said, Wanye can't sing. And we were like, why can't he sing? Because he's, he's lost his voice uh -oh. rehearsing for the tour. Uh-oh, uh-oh. You know? Get the lemon and honey. Uh, and so, yeah, so I think mean, L.A. said, well, he's the one. He said, the only way I can sing it is if I sing it really loud and stand back from the mic. And we were like, okay, well, stand your ass back because we got to <laughs> get this vocal because we got to finish the soundtrack. And he stood in the back and he had a towel on his throat and he was rocking. And if in the end of the song, he says, like, oh, my God, help me out a little bit, baby. His voice was so raw. He was and literally like, saying, help me, God. Help me. Yeah, get he said it. If you listen to the lyric out. now, when you go listen to it, you'll hear what I'm talking about. And I got even right. now I got chill bumps thinking about that lyric. I said, oh, we got to keep that part because he was just I felt bad that we were we were killing this dude's yes. voice. And but now the pain yeah. came through on the record. That adds a lot to the song. That adds a lot yeah. now because I always used to think, Absolutely. like, damn, why ain't sound like he is really Because his voice was quick. gone. And he and I don't know, he didn't sing it down that many times either because he didn't have a voice. And so he pushed it, it out. What do you mean by that, sing it down? Start, from, like, the top, start okay. from the top and sing it. Let us okay. try to get it. And Let so, us try okay. to get it. And so he's one of those hear? singers. I'm so sorry. So all these years, how, do you, how have you come to know like what it is about an artist um, but that that makes them 
you know, um, the, the depth of their talent? Like, what lets you know they're the one to bring a certain song? Because you said he didn't want that for Boyce Minute, and then he sung it and decided to change his mind. Because he, he, be, he said it would be way bigger on them than me. Okay, and, but how do you know that agree. about a particular he artist? Do you just, have an artist that's not mind? Or is it as you're writing it, you're like, oh, this will be good for this artist? Yeah, you just, you just kind of know. You know, it's, mm. you just kind of know. And sometimes you can miss, but I don't know. It's just, I think that's what the producer's gift is, is you have to be able to identify the artist, what their capability is, and then what you're matching them with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm sure Jam and Lewis will tell you that they knew if Janet sings this song, if she sings Control, she sings What Have I Done For You Lately like this, this is going to work. And that's something that they knew that she didn't know, that they're saying, trust me, just sing this like this, mm. trust me. And I've said that a lot. I'm like, trust me. Like Tony Braxton will say, are you sure? I go, yeah. And she'll say, okay, if you like it, I love it. I said, I like it. And, see, and she'll that's trust me. And she'll trust us. Right. And she'll trust yeah. us to guide her to say, this is what we think you should do. And then they are bringing, they don't really realize what they're bringing to it. They're bringing themselves and taking it to a whole nother level because then they've made it theirs. Now it's turned into something really crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, we knew it was a hit record, but when Boys the Men sang the doo doo out of it like they did, Hell, you couldn't have never told me that thing was going to stay at number right. one for 13 for weeks. Listen. That thing stayed at and number one for 13 weeks. And, yeah. and, and I heard people saying, I'm so sick of that song. I was like, so what? Hey. No, I was like, thank no. you. I was like, thank you. <laughs> so that's the unknown. You can feel good about it, but you don't really know. You can say, yep, you know what? I think this is a smash, but you don't really know what it's really going to do. You, you, you just feel good about it. And you let it go because you have to let it go at some point and go, you know what? I think we're good. I think I think we got one. I want to ask that too, Daryl. Is there some song that you've put out and you're like, oh, I wish I would have did this differently? No. No. OK. Because because that's what we do. You make sure you have checked every box. You dot the I's, cross the T's. I mean, we went over budget so many times because we always wanted to make sure it was right before we let it go. Because once you let it go, you can't pull it back. Right. That's once it's right out in the universe, you, you, you have to love it because you don't want to hear it on the radio and go, oh, I wish I had done. Uh -uh. Yeah, that, too, that, I, I hear in my day when I go run my errands or whatever, I may hear three of our songs on because I listen to 80s and I listen to satellite radio. Right. And there's not a song that I hear. I go, you know what? That's a good record. I'll hear Fairweather Friend. Like, damn, that record sounds good. Yes, you know, yes. I'll say, damn, that's a good record. And I and I feel good about what we did today, 30 whatever years ago. And that's, and that's how you have to. You have to, like I said, when you're done, you have to say, okay, that's it. And I've I've checked now. You have no control what happens, but you at least yourself have to say, I put everything into this, I believe in it, and I think it's good. So okay, it's done. Because you don't want to regret. You can't because right, no, you can't do anything all. about it. So who are, what are some, who are some new artists that you like, Daryl? And let's talk a little bit about the evolution of R and B. Um, I'm one of those people. I know R and B has evolved, but it's definitely not dead. You know, some people don't. Oh, there's yeah. really a lot of underrated talent out here. So who mm -hmm. are some of the newer artists that you that you're digging and that you would like to work with? Um, I don't know a lot of the new artists. I'm kind of removed. I know what I like, what I hear. Mm -hmm. I mean. I like her. I like The Weeknd. Um, you know, it's I don't know all of the R&B people that are, you know, I don't I don't claim to have my finger on the pulse. I just know what I like. I hear a record, not even know who it is sometimes, mm -hmm. but I like the record, you know, so I that's just I just like what I like. You know what I mean? But I don't have a I don't have a finger on the pulse of it anymore. You know, I just like the artists that I like when I hear a really good song. So you know what? That's a good record. That's a good song, you know, but I don't get that deep. And I'm not trying to work with those people. I'm mm. kind of, I'm, so kind, is there of, artists I'm like kind of that, done. Is there someone on your bucket list? That, so are you done mm -hmm. for, at this point? That's why mm -hmm. I asked. So what are you doing now currently? Are you just music consulting? Uh, I, know you got I get up. I ride my bike with my bike group. Uh, we rode 30 miles the other day. This morning I got up. I took a three mile run. Uh, 
I do what I want to do. Sometimes I sit at the piano. Sometimes. <laughs> <Love it. clears throat> right. Do you have a bay That's though? It. I have to ask. Uh, do I have a what? Do you have a bay, a, a lady friend, a, a friend? I mean, are you single? I just have to ask. For, <laughs> I, don't, I don't comment about my personal life. Okay. I don't. I don't okay. answer those questions. You know. Okay. I'm just. Uh, you know, I keep it music. Fair keep enough. It music. Fair enough. <laughs> we keep it fair musical. Enough. Keep the private fair life enough. private. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair but enough. That's, that's it. Fine. You know, I don't have anything on the horizons. I did a Christmas album this past Christmas. That oh, I'm really yep. proud of Christmas with you. Um, correct? Christmas with you. I had never done a whole album as a producer. Yes, that's what I wanted you know, to so ask you. I always, I, yeah, I always admired Kenny for doing Exhale, and I know it was a lot of work. And he did an amazing job. And I said, wow, I wish I could do that one day. So this was my opportunity to produce and write all the songs and produce uh, myself. So it was, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to do that. And I'm really proud of it. I love yeah. it. So, and I'm yep. sure that that's your first debut album, your debut album pretty much as an artist, correct? Yeah, as, yeah I guess I'm the, after all it's these sort of, years. It's sort, of, it's sort of like a generic Quincy Jones album. <laughs> <laughs> you know so, how, you know no, Quincy Jones good. did back uh, uh, Secret back Garden on. with Barry White and uh -huh. had, yeah, and I would use all the people. So I had my own guests, people that have sung on my records, and <clears throat> you know I brought them in to to sing the songs that I wrote, and so it was kind of like my generic Quincy Jones moment. <laughs> I love that. I love <laughs> but that. but and no comparison to Quincy at all. So okay. you well, know, he's mean, a great so. You're a legend. You all and and you reminded me of that album my mom had of his called the Duke. He had the album called the Duke, a yeah. song called the Duke. Yeah. So absolutely, I mean, yeah. He's the, he's the dude. He's the man. The dude. That's that's right. The dude. I'm just mm -hmm. saying. He the is dude. the man. He he is um, the goat. <laughs> absolutely. So For is sure. that yeah? Is that someone you admired? Yeah. Well, who were some? Oh, absolutely. You Quincy Jones. I got to meet him. You know, Tevin was on Quest. Mm -hmm. So when we did Can exactly. We Talk in Los Angeles, yeah. and Kenny goes. Uh, Quincy's gonna pop, come by and hear the song, and I'm going Quincy, Quincy. He goes, yeah, yeah, you never met him, right? I'm going, no. Nah. Quincy Jones. Yeah, so Quincy Jones walks in, and we play the record. <clears throat> Can we talk? And he loves it. Great job, I love it. And then he just starts talking. He starts talking from Count Basie to Frank Sinatra to Michael Jackson to Lena Horn to you know he's done it all. And I'm just standing there like, in awe. I mean, my, I don't think I asked one question. I just listened to him talk about all these wonderful stories and experiences. Oh, and it was just, it was amazing to meet him. I was so in awe I bet to, you meet, to, to, to meet him. It was, it was one of my, the highlights of my career was meeting him, you know, cause he I is, he is amazing. He has Absolutely. done, wow, just amazing <laughs> to all me. Right. And, the, and um, special um, natural folks poetry, natural folk poetry and art says special thanks to Dara for all those gifts of music. You wrote some of my favorite jams. Yes, he did. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and let me run down a little bit of the discography because you wrote several of my B-side jams that I love. That okay, what B-sides? I like to know. Work Me Slow. Yeah. <laughs> that okay. that should have been on the radio. That should have been. Yeah. That should yeah. be on the video. Um, and also, do you want to? Do you like, want to play? Do you it, want to it, play it a lot? It but played it a lot. Have gotten more, it should have been more of a um a hit yeah. because it was yeah, I agree I, with that. And on, I and did I like love that record. Own, I thought it was a good record. Bobby mm. Brown's on our own. I love how that put him in a in front of a different audience in a sense with him being yeah, on that. That was a fun record. That was that was that was fun. That was fun to do. That's one of my I love that song too. That's a that's a that's a fun record. That's a good record. I'll, yeah, yeah. So yeah, what, mm -hmm. let's talk about some of your, your favorites. And then I do want to come back to your Christmas album as well. Well first let me do this. I want to ask let's come back to the Christmas album and then we'll ask about some of your favorites because I'm sure you have okay, some that's fine. favorites. Christmas album. What made you decide to do a Christmas album as your debut album, Daryl? Well, my debut and my only album that I'll ever do, uh, because I always I love Christmas music. Okay. I grew up loving Christmas music. I love Christmas, my favorite holiday. Oh, okay. So about maybe seven years ago, you know, I'll sit at the piano. And my my kids would go, "Hey, Dad, you got to learn the Christmas songs so you can play them." So I would learn the a few standard songs and play them. But in my playing those songs, I would come across some chords on my own, and I was like, "Hmm, that might be a nice Christmas idea." 
So over the last five or six years, I started tucking these ideas away. And then I said, you know what? I think I'll do like a Quincy Jones kind of thing and just do some Christmas songs and invite some people to sing them. So it's just some songs that I compiled over the last five years and, um, you know, wrote some new ones, co-wrote some with a guy named Mario Alexander who lives here, great musician. And I just eventually just had enough songs to do an album. Now, my first thought was, I said, okay, I'm going to use all my favors and call all my friends that I've worked with. I'm going to call Tony Braxton, <laughs> right. Tony Campbell. I'm going right. to call Kenny, F7, Kenny Lattimore. I, I'm going to call Coco. I said, I'll get all these people to sing the songs. And my daughter says, Daddy, that'll take you 50 years to get done. <laughs> He said, "With all their, their I all those schedules, with all their schedules, yeah, egos, yeah, to fly ooh, them ooh, in, put them ooh. up. The egos, ooh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I am saying it. I ain't say who. Ooh, I ain't say ooh. who. You being truthful now. I'm you being, being truthful. truthful. So you know, my daughter said, "No, daddy, just just do it the other way, like you thought of." I said, "Yeah," and it was easier. All the people lived in Atlanta. They were happy, and it gave people shine. They never got a chance to shine. They've sung a lot of my backgrounds. Mm. One girl named Tanya Smith, she sung on Aretha Franklin, Tamia, mm. uh, uh, Deborah Cox. So she got a chance to sing lead on a song. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And some other guys that have sung background gave them the opportunity to shine on an album where they normally maybe wouldn't have gotten a chance. So I, I liked it better the way that I did it, you know, because I've done Christmas music with Tony and, you know, so. I just didn't I think like it would that, be Tony. That that special. Snowflakes. You, did you do that Snowflakes album? I did two songs. Yes, I like uh -huh. that, Tony. Um, did, Actually, one of my favorite songs, uh, "Christmas Time Is Here." Yeah, I did with her. Is one of my favorite favorite songs. I like that. Uh, I, don't, mm -hmm. she has, I don't know how many. She, I know she has that album. Christmas album. Does she? Have yeah, one? she has that one. Okay, and she that's did, it. And then I she like sang that. on the LaFace Christmas album. Yeah, she had a couple of songs on that. But I love that song. That was. We had a good time doing that. That was, I, I actually, I, I really love the records that we did on there. I love that. Um, so I just always loved doing Christmas music. So I said, okay, that's a good way for me to do an album. And so that's my only album. That's it. You, that's, I'm not doing goodness, it anymore. Darryl, you, you don't think you're going to do a sophomore album? No? You, no, you, no, 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 I'm done. No. no, that's it. Yeah. So wait a minute. No. I want to ask a little bit. Let's get back to, you said something um, about egos. Mm -hmm. what, what, Give me some insight about that. When I say ego, um, I don't, I don't like mean it. Way, as a producer, how have no, you... No, no, no. When I say, it? listen, when I say ego, I don't mean it in a sense that someone is difficult. I okay. mean that every artist has particular things that they like, certain way to do things. You know what I mean? And so you have to be accommodating as a producer. You right. have to, okay. you have to cater to that. You got to, you got to make them comfortable. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. And how do you so, do that? Like, how do you get to under, cause I know working with Tony, you, is that's you you get used to um, working with certain people how do you mm -hmm. adjust and shift and 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 because everybody has a different style and you might get used to one artist and so how do you transition between different artists and what they and accommodating what they like you just you just know i, I actually find out i'll tell my assistant say hey find out what they like what they like to drink what they like to eat you know how do they like this or whatever so when they come in they're like oh you have this oh yeah we found out you know, I'll, I'll find out what they like, what they don't like, because I want them to be as comfortable as they can. I want them to feel at home, you know, so I, I'll do my homework and say, OK, what do they like? Mm. You know, how do they like the lighting? How do they like how do they like to do what they do, you know, and try to make them comfortable? You know, like I said, every artist is different. You have to treat every artist differently, you know, and, you know, sometimes it's on the fly. You figure it out just kind of on the fly, what they like, what they don't like. So, okay, she don't like that. Okay, let's not do that, <laughs> right. you know? Because you, you don't want the, because the, when they are not relaxed, that creativity gets blocked. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You want them to be comfortable. And as we know, when we're not in a certain mode or environment. Mm -hmm. um, and so what uh, Rhonda Edel, Edelin wants to know, would you ever do an autobiography? Would you do a memoir or? Oh yes, that's probably the last thing that I'll do. That's Ooh. probably the last thing that I'll do because there are a lot of, a lot of people, I was talking to somebody the other day, everybody knows LaFace going forward. They don't know pre-LaFace. They don't know what occurred before LaFace records happened. Mm -hmm. And we were in Los Angeles for six years struggling, trying to make this thing happen. And people don't know that story. 
So Wait, I want to be able to tell that deal? story. Was that around the a time? Part of, a part of it the was deal? with the deal, but a bigger part of it was L.A. Kenny and I staying in California, trying to pedal songs, trying to write songs and pedal songs and staying in an apartment. And I was sleeping on the floor with the equipment. And, you know, they'd be like, hey, get up. Uh, James Ingram's coming by. Hey, wake up. Paula Abdul's coming by. Hey, wake up. This guy named Johnny Gill's coming by. Karen White's coming by. And people were coming by the apartment to listen to these songs that we were writing. How did you all connect with them? Did you all, were you all? Somebody like, told, somebody, somebody told them about us. Okay. You know, and we had, we had some, con yeah, it just kept, it kept, it kept building and building until eventually, uh, once LA and Kenny did Rock Steady, that just, that just knocked the door down. It totally knocked the door down and it was just the floodgates opened after that. It was, it was actually crazy. I mean, I mean, people used to say, how are you guys doing all this work? And we, we literally had a machine. I mean, Kenny and I may be at the house writing, LA may be at the studio. LA and Kenny may be at the studio, I may be at the house writing. Hmm. They, send me, they send me to the studio, go down there and work with the boys, do dial my heart with the boys. And we're going over here with uh, this girl named Pebbles. Like, okay. Oh my gosh. And then yes. they say, okay, go down here with Paula Abdul and do knocked out vocals and show her how it goes. And we're gonna go over here and get started with Karen. I'm like, okay, so we would have two to three studios and we just rotated. We just rotated. And one day we were at the studio called Silver Lake and they said, this kid, Bobby Brown, just got kicked out of New Edition. Oh he's God. gonna come by the, he's gonna come by the studio. And we were like, okay. So in walks this kid, it's his birthday, he's 21 years old and he's just full of energy. He's just bouncing off the walls. And I said, wow. And I remember when he left, I said, that kid will never live to be 30. Ooh. I said, that kid is crazy. But we took that energy that he had and like wrote for that energy. You know what I mean? Like nobody could have sung Don't Be Cruel because Bobby was listen, cruel. And he Roni, was mean. And, uh, listen, Roni was, didn't even love, that was, Roni to this day is just that. Yeah, that's a so that was an old song that Kenny had written about a really really young girl in Florida, and we called her Roni. And that's a song that Kenny had penned years ago. And Bobby, it was perfect for Bobby. Yes, it was. You know, and, he's, and he and he sung the hell out of everything. Yes, Rock he with did. You. He was he was Bobby's amazing. Oh my his God. energy. So we just took the energy and just said, okay, let's put it into his songs. You know on our own, don't be cruel. And then Teddy did the same thing with my prerogative, which was great. And the next thing you know, that thing was crazy. <laughs> it was, it just went out of control. But that was Bobby's energy, Bobby's attitude. You know, and I tell people, Bobby was not a great singer by any stretch. He wasn't a great singer. But he, but could, what he, but, right, he could thank perform you, his ass he, off. He could perform his He's ass off. He's the entertainer could, for sure. Right. And he could perform those songs yep. on record. And yep. a lot of times we'd be like, well, it's a little sharp, but you know what? He sang the hell out of it. Let's keep it. What the hell? Right. It's a because passionate it, because energy. It was, yeah, it's it. a passionate and yes. energy that he gave it. And once again, the marriage of what Bobby brought to the songs, that's the that's what we call the magic. That's the that's the part you can't predict. And it, that now that one blew me away. When that happened, I, I was blown away at don't the don't be cruel album. That was really Listen, crazy. <laughs> it's probably it's, it's probably his top selling, right? I mean, I I, would I don't know for numbers, a fact, but it but it, it could be. One, but I don't know for a fact. A but play. it was, and then we went. We were on vacation in Hawaii, and they said, "Hey, Bobby's in Honolulu. He's doing a show. Let's go see him." And I was like, "Okay, cool." So I forget where we were, Maui or somewhere. So we flew to Honolulu, and I'll never forget standing on the side of the stage, <clears throat> and the whole stadium was packed, and he started singing Rock With You and you could not hear Bobby singing it. You couldn't hear him singing it because the crowd was singing it. And for me, as a songwriter, that's my payday. To think that this whole crowd is singing a lyric that I wrote and the whole audience is singing it, that's my payday. That's that's what I get, Yes. you know? And so that was, that, was, that blew me away because I had never heard one of our songs being sung by that many people like that in a stadium. And it was that 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 to me is what I get as a songwriter. 
that's the, that's the fulfillment that I get. That is, okay. You know. I, I'm just, oh my Lord, I'm just having a moment. I wish we, I could just come to your house right now. <laughs> I know you have so many stories because I have to lot. ask you. It's and I'm being a little selfish tonight, y'all. I got to ask. It's a lot of stories. One of my absolute faves. Queen of the night, Whitney Houston. That's another one. The energy. Like, what was it like working with Whitney? Like, she is one of those artists. There will never be anyone like her. Ever in my yeah, that was she, she's one of those um, just like uh, Bobby Brown, he's another artist. They're yeah. never the, the energy, yeah. what they bring to the song, yeah, absolutely. And that, we need the same too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ironically, uh, for the movie, Kevin Costner had a title, and we don't work from titles. He had a title, Queen of the Night, and that's what stumped us in the beginning. It actually took a minute to get it because we were like, Well, we don't write from titles, we let the music tell us what the title is, mm. you know what I'm saying? By the melody, just like, dun, dun, dun. okay, what's it saying? It's saying, can we talk? That's what it's right. saying. So, so wait here's a somebody who gave us a and title. said, I want y'all to write a song with this title. Right, Queen of the Night, yeah. Uh -huh. And we were like, oh. uh -huh. you know, that's not what we do. So really it was, it was kind of Whitney who came in on it to really, cause she wrote it with us to really pulled it together, Make it fun. you know? To we make it pop, to make it another Grammy winner by because the way. it had to be because it had to be it was a rock kind of thing and you know we're R and B so right I remember right. I remember I think Kenny had a white guy come in either he can't I think he may, may have come and sang backgrounds with us and then maybe had a rock guitar guy I don't know if Kenny did the guitar I can't remember if he got so he said no it's got to be rock it's like we do R and B so it was it was in the beginning it was like a difficult thing but at the end of the day. It, I think it came together because of Whitney, because Whitney mm -hmm. was there and she worked on it with us. And and I wasn't sure about that song, but you know what made what sold me on it was when I when I saw it in the movie. When yeah, she performed it with the whole costume, the, you know, being the you know the uh, the artist that she was. I said, okay, yeah, it 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 worked because yeah. I really wasn't I personally wasn't sure, you know. But when I saw it and felt it the way they used it and her being Rachel and performing it right. as a rock star, I said, OK, yeah, yeah she, did it, it, she, it, did. she did it. She did it. She did her thing. She so did her what, thing. Who are, what are some of your favorites, Daryl? What are favorite let's talk songs? About your favorites. Yes. 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 I have a few for different. Just some I, of have, your I have favorite songs for different reasons. I love my favorite song is You Mean the World to Me because of, I love the music that Kenny created and the melody, but I also love the way Tony performed it. Uh, and it was her innocence. It was the beginning of Tony. And it's when she just kind of, it's like she didn't know. She was just, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know how you don't know I'm nothing. Just you just, in love with you that you mean the words. You, know, <laughs> you mean just, everything, just, right. Yeah, it was just such a That's pure. That's the only thing that matters, right. Not that her other right. performances aren't great, but I think in the beginning, it was just something that was pure about it. And altogether, the sound of it and Tony's performance. So that's my favorite song. But I have other favorite songs. Uh, one of my favorite songs is a song called Love Saw It that Kenny yes. and Ken White did. Oh my God, yes. That doesn't, wanna, it doesn't get a lot of play. Always with Pebbles, him and Pebbles. I'm sorry. Did you also do Always with Babyface no. Pebbles? No. No, uh uh. No, okay. I didn't. I, but I wasn't yes, a writer. Love on saw that. It. that is another B side. Love Saw It. Was, yeah, a, it a was great on the video, side. but not as much as. Not, it, yeah, not as. Yes. Yeah, but I love yes. the way they, the, the duet, the way they did that together. Mm -hmm. It was just, I thought it's, it was, I thought it was such a wonderful song. Each other. Like yes. They just, yes. I was like, oh my God. Yes. And Karen, Karen was great at emulating Kenny. If Kenny told her to do something, she could do it to the T. And that's why they worked so well, because she understood that melody and rhythm that Kenny would give her. And that was, that's one of my favorite songs is Love Saw It. The way it sounds, the yeah. mood of it, when it comes on. Uh, the way just yeah, just the way they sing it at the end when they go back and forth. Yeah, all that. So you know all that. So that's the good stuff. That's all that. Yeah, all that sauce. That's what I call the sauce. He about to have me up in here. Yeah, so that's one of my favorite songs. Um, 
Monica, why I love you so much is one of my favorites because it's the first thing I did by myself outside of LA and Kenny. Oh. And I didn't and I didn't know if I could do it by myself. And Dallas Austin called me. His studio was next door to my studio. He goes, Hey, you got something for Monica? And I'm going, uh no, but I'll get one. Exactly. And and I actually <laughs> had these little chords on the piano probably for a year. And I, I think I crafted that song in about an hour. And um it's very elementary, very simple. And Monica, once again, Mon a very innocent performance. I think she was 15 at the time. And I thought the song and the lyric fit her. Like you said, she was innocent. She wasn't talking about having sex. Right. You don't make me rush or do too much. Um, one right. day we're and, talk about and it was a hit. It was a, it was a, love, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. And it was, uh, mm -hmm. it was my first hit by myself. And so that for, for several reasons, just because I didn't, and it gave me a lot of confidence because, you know, I've been, had been a writing partner for years. And so when everybody went their separate ways, I was like, man, well, I got to at least try to see if I can do it. Mm. And so that really gave me the stamp. It's like, okay, I'll be okay. I know, I know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know, so that for that reason, but then I have other favorite songs. I love rock with you. I love my, 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 yeah. uh, Johnny just was, so incredible here was this young kid with a grown man voice right and the, once again the match of my 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 and johnny was so perfect that you know but i, I have a, I, there's so many songs for different reasons you know what i mean mm. uh, but those are those are some of my favorites you know swv of course uh you know listen what other <clears throat> swv besides you are my love have you done daryl that's it that's it that's it. So, okay, let's talk about TLC, right? Because we cannot, um, we got to mention, they pretty much are the top selling female group of all time ever. TLC. Okay. I didn't know. Is it, is it them or just a child? I don't know. One of, one of they, they in the top three. I was, okay, I, yeah. I, I think I, I looked it sure. up. We, we can, Did you? Okay, we can I'm not check, sure. But they in the top three. Oh, yeah. If, if, uh, yeah. They, if, if, yeah. if it's Destiny's Child, yeah. they, TLC is right. Right yeah, there, I under think them. they're yeah together. Um, yeah, great, great. It was fun, a lot of fun. Lot of, that's all I. When people say TLC, I go, it was just fun. That's all I can tell you. It was a comedy show. The, you did so. Sessions. It was on fan mail. Were you on um crazy? Sex I was on either. You know, oh, baby, but you baby, did baby, 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 baby. Yes, right. Yes. Not, not uh, that. And then not on that. fan and fan mail, I can't remember the name of the song, but okay. uh, but baby, 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 uh, to this day, yeah. thirty. Let me. Listeners, please, y'all. Baby, baby, baby <laughs> is 31 years old. I just want to remind folks. Really? Damn. 92. Oh, you crazy. That's crazy. 92? Dang, my son was born in 92. Y'all <laughs> y'all Google it. Listen. Wow. Okay. I, and that's why it blows my mind. I said, he did. Yeah. Baby, baby. Fun. Like, I it was, was all I think of TLC. Fun, stupid, funny. The sessions, my face would be hurting. Those girls were just straight. <laughs> comedians clowns three stooges i mean we couldn't hardly get through sessions because they just they kept us laughing all the time and it was just so much fun they were just like you know family like our daughters it was just it wasn't work at all we just get in there and just mm. oh was this just a hand, hands up i think this is probably a hands, hands up. up yeah yeah hands, yeah. hands up, up. Mm -hmm. hands yep. up and i miss yep. you so much i don't know if that was on. And Kenny Kenny did Red Light Special, which is a great song. Mm, oh my gosh. Uh, I love Red Light Special. Mm -hmm. I love that record. That's a good record. Kenny did. Um, but they were fun. They were just they were just too much fun. That's all I can tell you. It just was and that's how it should be. Music should be fun. It can't right. it can't seem it can't seem like it. what you've done. And you've had a fulfilling and storied career. And I again, Daryl, I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for having for me. Blessing my platform. It. I know the viewers enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone who watched. And I just yeah, really, thank you guys. I appreciate um, it. appreciate yeah. you for taking time because you are an icon mm. in my eyes. <laughs> I know when I and I because I remember seeing you go up on stage to get the grant to collect the Grammys with Babyface and them. And I always wondered, like, who is that other guy? And then when I um saw you on Soul TV, I think it was Soul TV mm -hmm. last year on um I forgot IRTS show. Um, yeah, I don't know what it was. <laughs> uh, it was one of those shows, but I was like, I have got to have him on. So I really appreciate cool. you. Cool, I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on and, and just and loving um, the music. I appreciate that. Uh, 
listen, I, I couldn't. My mother had a music mm. I'm gonna tell you, my mother had a high five stereo. Now I'm sure you remember this. You old enough to remember the high five? I'm old stereo enough. Trust me, I'm old that, enough. Yeah. That held five records at a time, right? And it would <laughs> drop one down. down, they drop down. Arm, just, That's right. I That's old school. That. That's real old school. My mother had this, and we had yeah, a music room. My mother did she, too. She had the T tags on the walls and the black mm -hmm. pipe posters. And this is when we were reading the album covers. And yep, so I, I read the album covers. Listen, the liner notes, I'm yeah. about the liner notes. So I, um, that's how I wanted to become a songwriter. I said, what does the right, I see, I see the Jackson 5, but what are these names underneath? Who's the corporation? Who's Cook right. and Davis? So I was intrigued about how do you get the song to the artist and what does a producer do? So I would see right. these credits and go, I was just really intrigued by the process of it so like you right. i would read all these liner notes about how they put this together you know right. marvin Gaye used these people and earth wind and fire it's like oh it's so many of them how are they making any money it's like nine of these dudes and then found out that maurice white was writing this music and producing it and and i became i became such a big fan and maurice was a big influence of mine because he yeah put all this great stuff together. And then I went to see them and it was over. Once I saw them, right. I'm I like, mean, oh my God, these guys are incredible. And to this day, they are still, you can't tell me, you, oh. can, you can't have a barbecue. And by the way, happy Father's Day to you, Daryl. Okay, cool, thank you. Father's Day thank is you. this weekend. Um, yeah, and we're weekend. having a barbecue Absolutely. Um, at my house. Oh, I cool. want to come to the barbecue. When well, you're in Detroit <laughs> though, next time, feel oh, free to it. stop by. Um, you, you can't have a barbecue without Earth, Wind & Fire. May spring no, yeah, work. absolutely. No, Just, work, like I said again, baby for his, or baby face Bobby Brown, the deal. We still play <laughs> occasions in sweet November. Okay, I those that's are good records. My playlist. That's one of my favorite this records. Day, sweet November. One of my favorite records of Kenny's is called Where Will You Go? Oh my gosh, yes. and who play that? That song oh, well, that song you have to get you have to get your like, tissue box out. Where he's like, that. Where, where will you go? Yes. I yeah. Absolutely. He sang, the, he sang the smack doo doo out of that song. That's one of my favorite songs. Yes, one of those right. songs that was kind of like people don't know. Like I do. Down, 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 down. Yeah, listen. Or, okay, yeah. we got to see. We can keep I, going. It's so, it's so many oh songs that I'm gosh. thinking of now. Even when you said that, you know, where will you go? Uh, never keeping secrets. Yes. Uh, if you, uh, it's so many. It's, yes. it's a lot. It's a. It's a lot of songs that weren't it's like big, big hits. That, you know, yeah. and, I, a lot and of I, songs. another one that I love, Stone Cold Gentleman. Wow, I, that, yeah, I did that with Ralph. That, album, that was fun. That whole yeah. album, but yeah. um, yeah, I did that with Ko. What I gotta Ko's, do? Ko's, Ko oh. was in the deal. Ko and I did that together. Oh my gosh! Uh, did, did you just Ralph do that Fresno. song, or did you do others on the album of Stone Cold? We Gentleman? did Stone Cold Gentleman, and I don't think we did a ballad. I okay, because I love uh, do, what, do what I gotta do. Do what I gotta do. I can't remember. Oh. I know Stone Cold Gentleman, then we did a ballad. And uh of course Jim and Terry had the hit with sensitivity, which is yeah. a great, oh, my a great song. Yes. Yeah. So uh but yeah, Woo! that was that was a good record. Ralph, that was some good songs. I really yeah, that was fun yeah. working with Ralph. Yeah, a lot of songs, like you said, that weren't big hits, but were, I have were like good a, songs. But you know, a there's a lot, there's so many. You yeah, know, sometimes I'll get my royalty statement and my royalty statement is like a book and I'll go <laughs> through the book and I'll be like, I don't even know what that song is. I mean, really, I'll be like, what the hell song is that? But it'll be a song that was on an album that, you know, wasn't a hit that we wrote, but I don't even remember it. <laughs> and now someone maybe sampled it or they're playing it somewhere or licensed it. Hey, or my son listen. pulled up a song on Destiny's Child album called Stay that I wrote. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I didn't know you wrote a song. I go, you know what, DJ? I said, I don't even remember writing that. <laughs> but I wrote That's it. How magnificent you are. Oh my you know, gosh. And I was like, know. okay, it wasn't a big record, a good record, but I said, okay, I know I wrote it, but I don't rem remember the, you know what I mean? Right. Anyway, absolutely. There's a there's a there's a lot of music. There's a I lot know, of music. I know, and I wish we did. could be on here more time. And I, I truly appreciate yeah. you. Um oh yeah, I'll come back. We'll go through some old old songs. Listen, That'd and if cool. whenever you are in Detroit, please, because you know, India, I don't know if you you live in Indianapolis now still, but no, I live in Atlanta. I haven't been in Indianapolis. Oh, Atlanta. 80, well, okay. I, live, well, I left Indianapolis in 83. Okay, 82. well, maybe I can look you up when I'm in Atlanta because my daughter goes to Spelman. Uh, oh, yeah, my absolutely. Sister, my sister lives. I have a lot of family down in Atlanta. My sister lives down okay. there. So I'll definitely look you yeah. up. Let look Renee, up. yeah, let Renee know when you're coming. Absolutely. And shout out absolutely. to her. To my oh, yeah, she's good. That's my girl. 
I appreciate yeah. you so much, um, Daryl. And let you. me say, see you next time. See I you next time. Uh, please let me know if there's any way I can support. Reach out because um, I'm a multimedia storyteller. I write and edit. Okay. Yeah, we got you know working on some other things that are not necessarily yeah. musical. Yeah. So we'll let you know. We'll Absolutely. Keep you well, you okay. enjoy your the rest of this week. Enjoy Father's Day and take care. You too. Thank you. Right, and thank you guys. Okay. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Lord, y'all have a good night. See you next time on Rock is Reality. Thanks for watching.